What's up guys, we're here, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna be going over the bite down on darkness, all of the season of blood powers. If you guys not have not seen this or have, don't know what the powers are, we're gonna go over all of them and I'm gonna leave a link to this down in the description below. So we already checked out the dev stream from the 10th and kind of reacted to all the patch notes in that video, which is really cool. So um, we're gonna take a look at the actual powers coming in because my overall consensus of a lot of these changes that a lot of it is pretty good. And I'm very hopeful and hopefully through testing, everything will come out pretty good. So um, everything descends um, or the second season begins October 17th at 10 a.m. PDT, which is going to be 1 p.m. My time. And we'll be live for all of that over here on twitch.com backslash warlock. So um, here is everything. We're just going to go check out the vampiric powers here. Okay, this is going to kind of break down how everything works. They give a little bit of lore here, and then you're going to be siphoning blood of the foes by using your vampiric powers. And they have a nice little graphic here. Um, so you're driving a stake into the darkness, and they're going to kind of talk about how you do this. So potent blood is what you're going to need. So you need potent blood that you're going to get from um, killing your monsters or bosses, whatever. And then potent blood can be spent in the vampiric powers tab within the character menu to unlock a random power or power upgrade. Vampiric powers can also be unlocked by the seasonal quest line. So this is what the graphic looks like. So you're gonna earn potent blood and then you can come in here and use the potent blood which you see down here as your spend and use it on particular powers, right? You can have five active powers at a time. So, uh, you can have a maximum of level three on each of your powers, which is pretty cool. And when you hover over vampiric power, you notice it displays symbols. Okay, and it'll show you level one here, two or three. Okay. Now, when you come down to customize your needs, you have to use a pack, cleansing, acid, all this stuff to really kind of use it. So there are pack types. They're going to be called ferocity, divinit divinity, and eternity. Keep your eyes peeled for these chests so you can get these items, okay? And once you have both pack armor, which you're gonna be getting in the season, you'll need for, you'll be able to put this stuff onto your gear pieces for vampiric powers equipped. That's kind of what you see here with these little symbols on your gear piece. You just kind of add them on. So that's what the above example it is. It provides one ferocity, one divinity, and one eternity packs. If you have a vampiric power that requires one ferocity to activate, then you have the one requirement. You just got to put it on there. Okay, so uh, bleed new blood into the build. So let's go take a look at some of these powers and let's just see if any of these are actually really cool and just kind of something we can really, really look forward to um, in uh, inside the game here. So let's uh, let's see. So you got minor ones and major ones. And the blow values represent their maximum level, level at three. So we got anticipation. Your ultimate skills gain 20% cooldown. And they do increase damage. That one's pretty good. Coven's Fangs. Your Conjuration Companion, Minion, and Bat Familiar attacks deal increased damage. This one sucks because the only thing it's really going to buff is your minions. But this is actually kind of cool. Lucky hits. They have a 30% chance to inflict a curse. Then we got Domination. You deal 24% increased damage to enemies who are stunned, immobilized, fear, frozen, or feared. Uh, if they're also injured and not an elite, they are instantly killed. Wow. If they're injured, if you guys don't know, that's when a monster's health is below 35% and you can instantly kill them. That's insane. Feed the Coven on a lucky hit. They have a 60% chance to restore primary resource and increase your damage. Again, this is just okay. I think this is going to be really good for a minion build. Hectic, for every five basic skills you cast, one of your active cooldowns is reduced by two seconds. For every five basic skills. This is okay. Um, Hemonacy? Hemoacy? Hemomancy. Hemomancy. Your attacks deal 80% of your max life is physical damage. This can occur every four seconds. You heal for 1% of your max life for each damage, enemy damage this way. This is okay. This kind of seems like an overpower thing. Infection, hitting enemies with direct damage, infects pox. 
uh, inflicts pox eight times, dealing 7% poison damage. Ooh, I like this. This is really cool for, like, the rabies build on the druid. Uh, jagged spikes, thorns. Okay, so you got an increased damage for thorns here against chilled and chilled enemies. Prey on the weak, increased damage to vulnerable enemies. Enemies are vulnerable while affected by a vampiric curse. Okay, this, this might be a pretty universal one to be used, I think. Um, yeah, that one seems like a very universal one. Uh, Rampart. After not moving, you gain a barrier. Uh, this is kind of interesting. I don't know. A lot of builds just kind of are always moving unless you're like smacking a, a boss. Ravenous. 20% chance to increase your attack speed by 40%. Oh, tw uh, attack speed by 40% of your total move speed. This could be cool. Resilience, damage reduction. Okay. The same Dream Brace. When you kill an enemy, you are fortified. Oh, this is going to be huge. And while you have fortified for half your max life, you'd gain 8% increased crit chance. Yikes, that's good. Um, especially since they're like building on the fortify and overpower stuff this season. Terror. When struck, you have a 14% chance to fear nearby enemies and slow them. You are guaranteed to critical strike enemies who are feared. Terror is going to go on my shadow sever build, and it's going to be insane. Oh, my God. That's going to be sweet. Casting skills heal you. Double this bonus while below. Undying. That's kind of nice. Okay. Okay. Major vampiric powers, which are going to require six packs. A cursed touch. Wait, how many powers were here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. What do we got? Thirty-two powers. A cursed touch. Chance to inflict a curse. Enemies with the curse have a chance to spread it. And Accursed Souls deal 200% increased damage. I think this is the one that we saw in the preview uh, a week ago. Bathe in blood. While channeling a skill, you form a pool of blood beneath you. Um, this is okay. I just, I'm not a big fan of the stationary stuff because you move so much in the game. But increased damage and damage reduction while you stand in a pool is pretty good. Blood boil. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, what? There's only like 22, 23, 24 curses or powers. All right. When your core skills overpower an enemy, you spawn three blood drops. Collecting blood drops causes it to explode, dealing 60% physical around you. This is okay. And then every 20 seconds, your next skill is guaranteed overpowered. This is going to be useful for a lot of overpower builds, particularly the uh, Necromancer. Call Familiar, casting a Mastery, Weapon Mastery, Mac, Wraith, or Imbuement skill, calls a Bat. Oh, we saw this one in the trailer. This isn't that great, I don't think. The chance to stun is nice, but I, I don't know. I feel like it takes too long. Flowing Veins, you deal 60% increased damage over time to enemies that are moving or affected by a curse. Okay, so Flowing Veins is really what's going to be a huge boost to dot builds, particularly for the Sorcerer. This is also going to be very good for the Shadow, uh, like the dot Shadow Damage uh, Sever build that I'm going to be playing. Uh, so this is really good over time because all monsters are always moving unless you freeze them or snare them, I guess. And it looks like it's very easy to apply a curse to them. So this is very, very strong. Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. Uh, when you evade, you turn into a cloud of bats, becoming unstoppable. This is the move one that we saw from the trailer. This seems really cool. I think this is going to be just a nice utility to kind of just speed through dungeons and open world content really nicely. And then Moonrise. Hitting an enemy with a basic skill grants you 4% attack speed for 10 seconds, stacking up to 5 times so you get a 20% um, increased attack speed. Very good. Upon reaching max stacks, you enter a Vampiric Blood Rage, gaining 160% basic skill damage and 50% um, movement speed. So not only do you get 25% um, increased attack speed, but you get 50% more move speed and 
160% basic skill damage for 10 seconds. That seems okay. All right, these are not too shabby at all. I think the biggest ones are like anticipation. Um, stuff to boost minions is very, very good. Damage to enemies who are CC'd, especially the fear one is kind of insane. Um, like the vampiric thing to automatically give you additional vulnerable is pretty darn good. Uh, and then, of course, all the fortify ones are pretty nuts, guys. So, yeah, kind of insane. Uh, and then there's the potent blood and pack armor drops in the blood harvest seasonal event. With a wave of his hand, we fight a bunch of monsters, putting enemies um, into a lot of stuff. That seems cool. Crush the crust, crust, crush the dark master's army in new events. There'll be new world events. Kind of cool. And then, of course, we have all the end game buffs here and kind of just who you're fighting. So, yeah, if you guys have not seen the. Again, all the powers. We kind of just went over all of them, um, but I'll leave a link to this down in the description below for you guys. But uh, I was very skeptical about the new season, seasonal theme, and just kind of how we're going to have like basically another hell tide, but just for vampiric stuff. Um, but now kind of just over reading the powers. I think a lot of these are going to be really, really cool. Um, and you get to have five of them. So it's going to be really, really interesting and unique to see what kind of combinations myself my community and you guys the players to kind of figure out um what kind of cool stuff we can put together to make our builds kind of nuts for the season you know have some fun i mean we all wanted to be a vampire when we saw underworld so um, maybe a few of us wanted to be lichens but that's okay but yeah so overall i think the powers are going to be cool it's going to be really nice to kind of test a lot of these out and just see um i i will say until we can kind of figure out what like how these powers interact and kind of combine with our regular skills and abilities and stuff i just hope that with all these powers we're not looking at a similar issue that we had in season one of the uh the malignant powers where it was season one of the barber and not any other malignant power in the game there was 32 of them and you only needed one so um, i'm hoping that that's not the case with all of these powers it doesn't seem like it reading it at first glance but of course once we get in and start testing things we're going to kind of just go through and see what actually is good and what is not good and what's not working so um but yeah thank you guys so much for watching make sure to like the video comment down below tell me what you guys think about all these powers coming into season two season of blood for diablo 4 and don't forget to subscribe and as always stay gaming and i'll see you guys in the next one peace